Hi everyone and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK tutorial. Last time we covered how to set up the SDK and in this tutorial we're going to be setting up a new scenery project and then start creating a basic airport. So the first thing we need to do before we start creating our airport is make a little folder structure for this project. So as you'll see here I've just got a folder called Flight Simulator 2020 Projects and that's inside my documents folder. This just houses all of the different projects that I'm working on and I'd recommend doing the same to keep your projects organised. So in here, I'm just going to make a new folder called Tutorial Airport. And that's just the name of the project. It doesn't really matter what you call it at this point. If we open up that new created folder, I'm going to make another folder called Package Sources. And then inside Package Sources, I'm going to make a final folder called Data. So with that directory structure created, we're now ready to start making the airport. So we'll open up Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I'm loaded in at the airport that I'll be editing. And the first thing we want to do is create our new project. So if we go up to the toolbar, click Dev Mode, New Project, opens up this little dialog box. If we click the three dots here, we want to navigate to the uh, project folder we created before, so Tutorial Airport in my case, and just click Select Folder in there. For the project name, uh, I usually call that the same as the uh, containing folder, so I'll call it Tutorial Airport. And for the output directory, just leave that as a dot. Hit OK. It'll open up the project editor here. The next thing we want to do is click on the plus icon down here. And that will go as the Add Package dialog. But in here, I'm just going to type the name of my package. So RB Airport. Uh, the ICAO code for my airport and then the name of my airport. I'll explain the naming convention in a second. And then for the type, make sure you pick BGL for scenery project. So next, uh, if you don't already have it open on your screen, just go to view inspector. I'll pop up the inspector. And here we can see the name that I just entered has been split out into company name and package name. The company name can just be whatever you want, uh, something that you go by with creating your packages. Then the package name uh, does have some naming conventions, although they are guidelines, so I don't think you have to name them, name your packages like this, but it's worth sticking with them. So you'll see there, uh, the guidelines for airports is airport-icao code-name of the airport. So with that created, then we want to go down to content type in the drop down here and make sure you click scenery. And then for the Content Manager thumbnail, if we just click in here, we just want to pick an image for our uh, package. So the easiest thing to do here is go to your SDK folder, go to Samples, Simple Airport, Package Definitions, My Company Airport, and then Content Info and Thumbnail. And that will just put a placeholder icon here and it just helps avoid some errors when you build the project later down the line. So if we head back up to the project editor, you can see we've got the package we just made. If we open that up, we've got our scenery uh, object here. So next we want to go down here, we've got the name and the type, BGL, asset directory, we hit the three dots on the right. Uh, we go to the folder structure that we made earlier, go to package sources, data, and click select folder and that just sets where all your assets will be saved for this uh, scenery object. Uh, you can leave the output directory as scenery. Some people do scenery slash global slash scenery. Um, I don't think it really matters. This is just the folder structure inside the built package that it will create. So scenery is fine there. With that done, we can load up this scenery. So if we click load in editor here, again, we'll get dropped into a top down view like we did before in the previous tutorial. I'm just gonna rotate this and move back across the airport. That will open up the scenery editor and the material editor, and I've already got these docked over here. Some things you want to open are the objects and the gizmo. They're just useful for when you're developing your project. So if you've not got those open, just go to view and click options, gizmo, and also properties, which I've got dragged over here. So with all those open, if we go over to the objects panel, click this drop down here and look for airport. And just click add and that will add an airport object into the world which is you can see with this little gizmo here what you want to do is click on the uh, 
green square and you can drag it around and just drag that somewhere in the middle of your airport it doesn't really matter if we zoom out a bit further and select the airport again you can see the radius it's making so as long as your airport's within that it's fine okay and um, if we go over to the senior editor here we can see we've got an error and if we hover over the airport it says no airport icao that just means we have to enter the icao code over here i'm just going to enter the one for my airport and make sure you click enter in these boxes because if you don't click enter it won't update sometimes i'm also just going to fill out the airport name like so if we take another look over at the senior editor we can see that there's no more red errors there so we're good to save one last thing that you want to do when you're creating custom airports is make sure you tick star airport here that just makes it sure in the world map with a star which makes it easier to find if people download your airport you also want to come down here to the to delete section and in here it's just selecting parts of the original airport that you want to delete and don't want to be there when you load in your airport so what I generally do is just delete all the things related to the physical aspects of the airport. So apron lights, aprons, uh, helipads, runways, starts, taxiways, etc, etc. Um, I generally leave on things like approaches and frequencies as I don't want to be redefining those. So you can pick and choose depending on how much you're going to create in your airport what you want removed out of here. So I generally leave it as something like that. Possibly painted elements as well and taxiway signs. And that's pretty good for that part. Next, we're going to make our runways. So if you come back over to the objects panel here, click the drop down and select runway. You can either select the number of the runway in here or you can do it later. I'm just going to zoom in and I can see here we've got runway 02. So I'm going to select 02 and click add. That pops out our runway here. And what I'm going to do is just drag this to the middle or near enough the middle point on my runway. Then we can rotate, we need to rotate and scale this runway. So there's two ways of doing this. These little green dots on either end, if you click on those, those act as rotation points. Or if we go over to the gizmo, we've got the translate, rotate and scale buttons. If we just click rotate, we can also rotate that way. As for the length of the runway, I'm just going to pop that back to translate. As for the length of the runway, uh, if we click on these white dots here and drag those out, drag out the runway like so, and these ones at the side are just the width. So that's a nice visual way of just um, adjusting the runway to be the correct size. So I'm just going to quickly uh, make this runway the correct length. Just drag out these points here, like so. The end of the runway's there. I'm just going to zoom in and try and align this a bit better with the satellite image. See if we can get that good first try. It's, it's not too bad. Let's take it a little bit longer here. Okay, so what we've got here is um, an, a plain runway. Um, so what we might want to do is just add some markings to this runway. So if you come over to the properties panel, we've got all these options here. If we just click on markings, just add some edge markings, threshold, uh, the center dash line, number designator, things like that. And as you can see, it starts looking more and more like a runway. If we zoom out, we can see the runway here. That looks pretty good to me so far. Just noticed I've actually got this runway the wrong way around, but that's fine. Um, I'm just going to do a rotation, so this time I'll use the gizmo tool. Just give that a 180 degree rotation. And then fine tune it down here with these little extra ones. There we go, that's a bit better. Sometimes it'll, the textures glitch out a bit when you're in developer mode, but that's fine. Like the final important thing that you want to do when you're making your runways is make sure you set the runway start points. So by default, the start points are these two little green arrows and they're right in the middle of the runway. So if you were to open up this airport uh, out of developer mode, you'd start right down the center and that's not great. So what you want to do, I'm just going to minimize this little objects panel here. Let's go to your prop, select the runway first and then go to your properties. 
click Runway Start, and then Edit Position. And we'll see that gives us an extra little drop down. I'm just going to drag it just behind the uh, designated marker there. And then do the same for the secondary start. So somewhere around there would be good. And make sure you untick edit position here, otherwise it acts a little bit strangely. So if I just select the runway, um, we can see the little green marker there. And also make sure it's pointing in the correct direction. It should generally be pointing the right way if you've, uh, when you've positioned, but just make sure. So that means we're going to start here and be facing down that way. So that looks pretty good for a basic airport. So we've got our airport object and we've got our runway, as we can see in the top right here. So the next thing we want to do, it's always a good thing to do early on when you're making a new project, is just check that it saves correctly. You don't want to add a load of things into your project and find out you're having saving issues and have to start over. So what we want to do is just come over to the scenery editor here, and click save scenery. And that will pop up a little save as dialog. And we can see at the top here, it's pre-selected our package sources data. So that is the folder that we put into the assets directory here. So I'm just going to call this scenery file airport. Actually, I'm going to call it EGCN airport. And it's important down the line that you name your different files, different names. So if we added a polygon object, it would try and save a shape file rather than the scenery file. Make sure you do not save it with the same name, otherwise you'll get a lot of issues with overwriting files and it'll generally break your project. So make sure you give it different names. So I'm just going to call this one Airport. And that's saved there. So now if I just quickly drag this out, we can see we've got an extra line here saying the current scenery and the XML file has been saved. So if I just pull out my folder here and go into the data we can see it's saved this XML file and give that a quick open up it's got the runways in here and as you add things to your airport object this XML file will grow and grow so if we look at the scenery editor we can now see that saved properly there's no uh, asterisks next to the name like there is on the project editor so next we need to save the project so again, if you just control S in there or project and save, uh, just make sure that's saved. So the last thing to do is building the package. So if we open up the console window, you can use the tilde key on your keyboard, or you can go up the windows console here. And I'm just going to resize that so it's a little less obnoxious. Uh, it's always nice to clear the console and it just gives you a clean slate so you can definitely see what came from when you built the package. So then head over to the inspector, make sure you've got the project selected and not the scenery object. And then click build package. We'll see here we get these lines to start reading the XML file, generating the scenery, and then finished here. Package builder finished, zero skipped, two done, zero failed. That is the important line to look for, make sure there's no failed here. We have a few warnings up here like create a name is missing. You may get a few extra errors as well, and these ones at the bottom you can generally ignore. They're to do with extra things in the project. One for sure way to make sure that your project is generated correctly is go to your projects folder that you've generated in your projects directory and see in here. So now we've got, this is the um, folder that we need, package sources, we've got package definitions which contains the stuff to do with our package. And then here we've got our thumbnail that we added. And we've also got the packages folder. So in here you'll find the compiled package and this is the item that you'll copy into your community packages folder or upload to various websites so other people can download it. So this is the part that you need to share. So as long as this is in here, your package is compiled correctly, even though we do have these errors and warnings at the bottom of the console, that's fine. If I look in here, got our manifest layout and the content into which has got the thumbnail in. We also have the scenery folder. So this corresponds to whatever we called our output directory here. And in there we just have our BGL, the uh, scenery package that we made. So that's pretty much it for making the airport. 
Next up is uh, loading it in and checking that it works correctly in Flight Simulator. So I'm going to copy this over to my Community Packages folder and reload the game, and then jump into this airport. Okay, so I'm loaded back into Flight Sim, and I'm just in the world map at the moment. One thing that we can see on here that shows that the custom airport is loaded correctly is we've got a nice little star next to Doncaster Sheffield now. So I'll go ahead and set that as my departure, then just click fly. Okay, so that's loaded in. I'm just going to pop us out to the drone camera so we can get a good look around at this airport. If I just zoom out a bit here, we can see we've got just the runway that we created before. All the taxiways and aprons have disappeared from this airport, and that's just what we wanted when we selected those checkboxes in the to delete section. So that's pretty much it for creating the basic airport. In the next tutorial, I'll be going over how to add taxiways, aprons, and parking. So I hope you've enjoyed, and thanks for watching.